Hi, I'm Carlos Lopez, Managing Director of Creative Planning. The SECURE Act 2.0 created new need-to-know rules for retirement accounts in 2023 and beyond. In today's video, we will review the highlights for an individual investor and the impact of these important changes. While SECURE Act 2.0 created dozens of provisions, the highlights include increasing the age at which retirees must begin taking RMDs from an IRA and 401k accounts, changes to the size of catch-up contributions for older workers with workplace retirement plans, and enhancements to qualified charitable distributions from these retirement plans. Additional changes are meant to help younger people continue to save while paying off student loan debt and enable people to save for emergencies within a retirement account, transferring 529s to Roth IRAs, and changes to SEP and simple plans to allow Roth contributions. Are you ready to learn more? Let's get started. First, let's discuss some pretty big changes to required minimum distributions or RMDs. The age at which owners of retirement accounts must start taking RMDs has increased to age 73 starting January 1st, 2023. Previously, the age to start taking RMDs was 72. So for many individuals, they'll have an additional year to delay taking a mandatory withdrawal from their retirement accounts. Two important things to think about. If you turn 72 in 2022 or earlier, you will need to continue taking your RMDs as scheduled. If you're turning 72 in 2023 and have already scheduled your withdrawal, you may wanna consider updating your withdrawal plan since your RMD isn't going to need to start until you turn age 73. 10 years from now, Secure Act 2.0 also pushes the age at which RMDs must start to age 75. Now, also starting in 2023, the steep penalty for failing to take an RMD will decrease to 25% of the RMD amount not taken. That's down from 50%. And the penalty will be further reduced to 10% for IRA owners who promptly uh, take care of that RMD, that late RMD, and make that withdrawal and a timely um, amendment to their, to their tax return. Now, as you're probably aware, RMDs are not required from your personal Roth IRA, but they are required from your own Roth 401k or 403b. The SECURE Act 2.0 eliminates the RMD requirement from a Roth 401k and a Roth 403b, but not until 2024. So putting it on par with your Roth IRA at that time and beginning immediately for in-plan annuity payments that exceed the participant's RMD amount, you'll now be able to use that excess annuity payment and apply it towards that year's RMD. The SECURE Act 2.0 doesn't impact the RMD age or the schedule of those payments for inherited retirement accounts. So you must continue to take those RMDs as defined by current law and IRS guidance. Next, let's discuss higher catch-up contributions provided by the new law. We'll first start with those found in qualified plans like 401ks and 403bs at work. So while the current catch-up for those aged 50 and over is just $7,500 in 2023, starting January 1st, 2025, individuals who are ages 60 through 63 will be able to make catch-up contributions of $10,000 annually to a workplace plan, and that amount will be indexed to inflation. One caveat in 2024 is if you earn more than $145,000 in the prior calendar year, all catch-up contributions at age 50 or older will need to be made to a Roth account in an after-tax dollars. Individuals earning $145,000 or less, adjusted for inflation going forward, will be exempt from the Roth requirement. Let's talk a little bit about matching for those Roth accounts. This is another provision of the law that allows for employers to be able to provide employees the option of receiving vested matching contributions to Roth accounts in 2023. Although keep in mind, it's gonna take some time for plan providers to offer this through their payroll systems and to get their uh, custodial accounts up to date to be able to do this. Uh, previously, matching of employer-sponsored plans or there was employer matching contributions were only made on a pre-tax basis. Contributions to a Roth retirement plan are made on an after-tax basis, and that for a lot of people will be great because the earnings can grow tax-free, but it isn't going to be uh, ideal for everybody. These provisions enhance the role of Roth accounts in retirement planning. If you believe you'll be in a higher tax bracket in retirement than you are now, this could be a good change. However, for some people with higher incomes, the catch-up contribution rules could mean they are forced to pay taxes at a higher rate today since they're forced to make those catch-up contributions on an after-tax basis. This makes meeting with a wealth advisor more important than ever to ensure that contributions and future distributions are made in the most tax-efficient manner possible. 
Secure Act 2.0 also allowed larger IRA catch-up contributions as well. The annual cap on regular IRA contributions is $6,500 in 2023. People who are age 50 or older can make a catch-up contribution of $1,000 per year, but catch-up contributions have now been adjusted for inflation in Secure Act 2.0, and the new rules will begin to increase these $1,000 catch-ups beginning in 2024. So all of these changes will allow older workers, particularly those who may be behind on their retirement savings, to make larger contributions to their tax-advantaged retirement accounts. Now, combined with an extension of the RMD age, this will allow older workers to put in more money away for retirement and defer that taxable income even longer. There were other very significant updates to many other aspects of retirement savings and distributions in the new law. Let's talk first about qualified charitable distributions. A QCD allows IRA owners at age 70 and a half and older to donate up to $100,000 a year to qualified charities through a non-taxable distribution from their IRA. The new law indexes the current $100,000 annual limit for inflation beginning in 2024. In addition, beginning this year in 2023, the law allows a one-time QCD of up to $50,000 to charities via charitable gift annuity, charitable remainder uni trust, and a charitable remainder annuity trust. This provision enhances the ability to use QCDs not only to cover RMDs, but also help a good cause in the process. QCDs can be a good option for making charitable donations, but like any charitable strategy, please seek out your CPA or your financial advisor for advice in your particular situation. Let's talk next about student loan repayments. So beginning in 2024, employers can make 401k matching contributions based on a worker student's loan payments. So contributions into a 401k, no matter how small, can add up over time thanks to the power of compounding. So this will give workers an extra incentive to save while at the same time they're paying down their educational student loans. For those juggling large student loan debts and expenses, this provision could be a really great benefit. Additionally, the Act enhanced emergency savings. So another new provision allows workers to open emergency savings accounts inside their 401k plans beginning in 2024. Defined contribution retirement plans would be able to add an emergency savings account that is designated Roth account eligible, and this will accept participant contributions for non-highly compensated employees beginning next year, rather in 2024. Contributions will be limited to a max of $2,500 annually, and the first four withdrawals in a year would be tax and penalty free. Depending on plan rules, contributions may be eligible for an employer match. And in addition to giving participants penalty free access to these funds, an emergency savings fund could encourage plan participants to save for short term and unexpected expenses. Another really neat enhancement to Secure Act 2.0 is the ability to roll over 529 accounts to Roth IRAs. So this allows people to make penalty-free, tax-free rollovers from a 529 college plan to a Roth IRA subject to certain rules and limitations. So after you've owned a 529 for at least 15 years, the 529 plan assets can be rolled over to a Roth IRA for the beneficiary subject to annual Roth contribution limits. The amount transferred during that year is limited to the annual amount allowed for a Roth IRA contribution, and all transfers are limited to a lifetime maximum of 35,000. The rollovers would count as contributions for the purposes of the limits on Roth IRA contributions, and the rollover would be subject to the requirement that the Roth IRA owner have includable active compensation at least equal to the amount of the rollover for a particular year. However, the income tests on Roth IRA contributions would not apply. In addition, the rollover would be limited to the aggregate amount contributed to the 529 plus earnings before the five-year period ending on the date the rollover occurs. This new 529 rollover provision may alleviate a parent's potential concern that they're overfunding a 529 plan. So for example, if a child qualifies for scholarships or school expenses are less than anticipated, leftover 529 accounts can be transferred to the beneficiary's Roth IRA. This could also be a really great way to jumpstart a child's start to their own retirement savings since the amount that they would have otherwise contributed to a Roth in those years can, put, can be put into savings elsewhere. Finally, let's end with the SEP and simple Roth contributions. So for the first time, beginning in 2023, self-employed individuals who have a SEP or a simple IRA will be able to contribute Roth contributions to their plan. 
Now, these are made with after-tax dollars, of course, and previously only pre-tax dollars were accepted into these plans. Again, it's going to take some time for your brokerage firm or custodian to be able to enhance their electronic systems to be able to allow these Roth contributions. So be patient, but that law is going into effect this year. The SECURE Act 2.0 is part of a larger $1.7 trillion omnibus tax package, and there are far more changes and updates than we can provide to you in this very short video. But today I've highlighted the major changes for the individual investor, and as always, if you have questions, reach out to your financial advisor, to your CPA, and if you don't have one, please contact us here at Creative Planning. We look forward to working with you and hearing from you. See you next time.